Good morning. Why don't you stand with us this morning? How many of you came in here ready to worship, ready to receive, ready to give God your very best? Amen? Amen. Father, we just thank you and we praise you for this day, God, and we dedicate this service to you. Lord, we pray that we would have freedom in worshiping you. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this place. May you just flow through this house this morning, God. Hearts touched, lives impacted, and hearts changed. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's put those hands together. Aren't you excited to say that the Heavenly Father is your friend and he calls us friend? Who am I? that you are mindful of me, oh, that you hear me when I call. Is it true that you are thinking of me, oh, how you love me? It's amazing. Come on, let's sing, who am I? Who am I that you are mindful of me? Oh, that you hear me when I call. Is it true that you are thinking of me? Oh, how you love me. It's amazing. That you are mindful of me, oh, that you hear me when I call. Aren't you excited? Is it true that you are thinking of me, oh, how you love me? Free. 
God, you call me friend. Come on, just the drums in our hands. Let's put it together. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. You call me friend. I am a friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. Praise your name. Isn't it wonderful to know that we serve a God and that no matter what season of life that we're in, he is there and that we can raise a hallelujah no matter what. Amen. I raise a hallelujah. In the presence of my enemies And I raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief oh, oh. I raise a hallelujah mm. My weapon is a melody A hallelujah Heaven comes to fight for me Yes So I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Church, let's not be afraid to raise our voice this morning. And I raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. Come on. I raise a hallelujah. Yes, I will watch the darkness flee. I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. I raise a hallelujah. Fear you lost your hold on me. In the middle of the storm, louder and louder. 
the middle of the storm louder
this storm today, God, that Michelle Diaz and the family is facing. May they know you today as the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the King who was dead but who defeated death and sin and hell and the grave. May they know you today. Lord, may you bring comfort, may you bring healing, may you bring peace, oh God, to the Diaz, to the Cologne, to the extended family today, oh God. Lord, we thank you for this dear servant of God, Pastor Sammy Colon. Thank you, God, even for those of us that were blessed to see him minister here. God, thank you. And thank you for the countless lives, oh God, that he has touched. God in ministry and life, for the ministry to his wife, to his children, to those, oh God, throughout the Bronx and throughout the areas, oh God, even far beyond. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this man. We know precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And God, we pray today, Lord, that you would remind this uh, beloved wife and these children, oh God, both adult children as well as little ones, oh God, that you would remind even this dear niece, Michelle, and each one in the family today, God, that you are with them, that nothing, nothing is in vain when we are in Christ Jesus. Nothing is in vain, that even death itself, oh God, is not the final statement. We thank you for the hope of the resurrection, that just as you broke the bonds of death and the grave, oh God, Pastor Sammy, so too will he break the bonds of the grave one day. God, thank you. Even now, thank you that he is with you. Thank you even now he is at your throne, oh God. Even now, Lord, we thank you for the hope as you say, for today you said to that man, today you'll be with me in paradise. And we thank you, Lord. Would you bring comfort? Would you bring strength? Would you bring hope? And for the lives today, oh God, that he has touched, but maybe who never said yes to you, who put it off for another day. God, may this moment be a reminder to them, oh God, of the brevity of life and the necessity to choose wisely now. And God, for even each one in the sound of my voice, as we pray for this family, as we pray for others today, oh God, that are grieving and hurting, oh God, would you do the work by your Holy Spirit, oh God, convincing and convicting, oh God, of sin and the reminder, oh God, that now is the time, now is the day, today is the day, oh God, the day to choose you, for choose for yourselves whom you will serve. And Lord God, we pray in the name of Jesus, oh God, that not one life, oh God, touched by this man, or even by not only his life, but by his death, oh God, would be able to leave, oh God, these moments without knowing that they have said yes to you, Jesus, that they have turned the reins of their life over to you. So we say yes to you, Jesus. We say yes to you. We say yes to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, O oh God. I'm going to sing. You sing that part. And I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're going to hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Why? Because death, death is defeated, the king is alive. Sing that again. I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're going to hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the King is alive. Can you say amen? Amen. Let's continue to worship Him in song. Let's continue to worship Him in song today. Yours 
and my hope is in you only and my heart you hold cause you made this sinner holy and holy holy Jesus cause your glory is so beautiful I fall to my knees in awe and the heartbeat of my life is to worship in your light cause your glory is so beautiful your glory is so beautiful Yes, my life is yours, and my hope is in you only, and my heart you hold, cause you made this sinner.
God. 
And all my life you have been faithful And all my life With every breath that I I will sing of the good Thank you, Lord. How many of you know we might live in Rockland County, but we will not let the rocks cry out? Amen. We will not let the rocks cry out. Amen. Listen, I don't think this moment's done. Some of you through this room today, you need to come. I'll give you maybe 30 seconds to a minute. We don't need a long backstory, but you're coming and saying, I have to give thanks to God for this today. I have to give thanks to God today. Okay. Thank you, Lily. As she comes, just others of you, just like, yep, I'm coming. I'm coming. Thank you, Lily. I have to give thanks to the God because yesterday night I went to meet her stuff. I can believe it. It's when it's pack out. Thank you, Lord. Amen. A little context, I will give backstory. Mirta is Lillian's daughter, who was here with us last Sunday night, leading us in a worship concert, and just had a live recording last night down uh, down in New Jersey. And praise God, praise God, Spence. Uh, yeah, I just got a new job, and uh, the guy next to me is a born again Christian too. So we're kind of praying for each other. He just started too, so it's it's a real blessing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Floor is open. Just take it right now. Yep. Thank you. Good morning, church family. I just want to thank God for the goodness. I've just been through a lot, of a, a huge storm from December on, and my church family have been praying for me, and he's just been, like, sending, like, his, like, the church family just come alongside of me and never leave me, always calling me, always praying with me, and I just want to thank him for the goodness. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I just want to thank God. I just completed 48 hours wearing my halter monitor to monitor my heart this morning. Thank you. Praise God. I want to thank God that um, two years ago, David was on kidney dialysis and almost dead. And now he's taking a tour to Israel. So praise God. Amen. And we're all envious now. Now pray for us for our envy. Yes. Hey, Scott. I want to thank God for my grades. For me. They were really bad, but they're, they're up now. I'm like 90s, 80s. Praise the Lord. 
Good morning, everyone. I just want to say thank you to God because a um, few weeks ago, my mother's house was on fire. And thank God, the, 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 everyone was safe and it was only just the garage and then the whole house wasn't burned. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Kerry. Uh, I want to thank God for keeping me healthy throughout this track season. We don't take it for granted. We don't take it for granted. Come. I want to thank God for keeping me and my family safe during COVID. I contracted COVID during 2019, and thank God I haven't seen it again, and we are all safe and healthy. Thank you. Matt. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sylvia. God bless you. Hello, church family. I want to thank God for a lot of things, but today I want to thank God for my church family, my pastor, for really going through me and my husband a lot sickness and everything else but without you guys and the prayer we couldn't make it we went to Georgia for two weeks and I didn't expect that my husband you know would make it there and come back safe but thanks to God and my church family he is here and doing better thank God love you Cecil amen Claudia I want to thank God because I've been praying to see my family here and uh, God is bringing them. Uh, today my daughter is here. She's been coming for a few months and I feel and I thank God because I know that it's not going to be only her, that my entire family is going to be coming to this church. Thank you. I, I just praise the Lord because... Um, he has put something in my heart. It's quite a burden, but I ask him, Lord, give me a vision to show me that things are in your hands, that that um, you are, everything is in, in your hands. Everything is according to your purpose. And he gave me a vision of two light bulbs, and they just lit up. I just praise the Lord. That means an awful lot to me amen amen love the way god can speak to us personally in ways and using images and pictures that mean something to us even though it might not mean anything to anybody else right jake come um i just feel like you know i've been hearing a lot of silence lately and i just have to give thanks because i feel like on april 20th 2023 like a week ago God just showed up in my life in a way that I knew was real, but I didn't know was that real, and just brought a lot of things from my past that have been a spirit of oppression to light. And um, I just, he's so awesome that he could just love broken souls like us, that he would show up to us regardless of where we are in our lives. And I'm just grateful for my life, my wife, my family, and uh, this church. Amen. Amen. Loka. God bless everyone. Um, I want to thank God for all the things that he had done for me, even though I, I keep saying it many times, but I will never stop saying thank you to the Lord for everything that he has done for me and the miracles, the sickness, everything. But most of all, I want to thank God for my daughter, Debbie. She 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 was uh, she had surgery from a, a, a tumor a cancerous tumor in her breast it was removed she went through chemo she just finished radiation and she's feeling good and i will never stop saying thank you to the lord for that he's been so good to me every time they sing this song i just feel the presence of god because everything every word goes to me thank you god bless you Yes. In, in the midst of the storm, right? In the midst of the storm. Yes, Sonia. Thank the Lord that he was with me in the midst of the storm. It's a year ago now that I was in the hospital and had that internal bleed that they couldn't find where it was. But 
through the prayers of the of this family of God here and the pastor and uh, they they finally found it after five blood transfusions and were able to stop the bleeding and I thank the Lord that he has brought me through and I'm believing that he's going to restore my health Lord and as my days are so shall my strength be and that even in my old age that he was going to be with me and give me new strength and that my latter years can be better than my former years and I, I'm looking at Sonia my other Sonia there and I want to thank her and those that came to to visit me in the hospital too but all glory to God in Jesus name amen amen Sonia's father would always say Grandpa Thompson we're not going under we're going over he was a seafaring Norwegian so he really meant that in more ways than one come guys yeah amen So I'm having a hard time talking. I'm so thankful. In 2021, I had a, I don't know how to say it because I'm Hispanic, so English is not my, but someone did a bad practice surgery in another country and I almost died. Um, the, the surgeon quit, like he quit, he left the country. No one wanted to take care of me because they said that if if another surgeon already did the practice on me, they couldn't put their hands on me because then they would be responsible for it. And I've known Jesus since 2013, but then I walked away from him. I started sinning again. And I was in the, in the office or clinic and I couldn't stand up for three minutes because I would faint because I was so weak. My body was so weak. I went from 302 pounds to 160 pounds. Uh, like I was doing really bad. And then I told my mother, I'm like, I need to go inside the bathroom because I felt like I needed to talk to God because I, I felt it inside me that I was dying, that I wasn't going to make it. <laughs> So I told my mother, I need to go inside the bathroom by myself. And she's like, no, but you can't because you faint every three minutes. And I'm like, I I'll leave the door unlocked. If anything happens, then you just come inside. So I had my arms open. I had my stomach open. I had to be open for two weeks because my skin couldn't uh, close. And then with the strength that Jesus gave me, I held onto the sink and I got on my knees and I said, Lord, I'm so sorry for turning my back on you <laughs> please give me life again three days went by a friend that I haven't seen in years came to my house and she said I was trying to look for a doctor but I couldn't tell you anything because I didn't want to give you false hopes and when I we said she said we found a doctor that's able to take care of you so they finally found a doctor and he said, you would have waited three more days and we had to amputate your legs because you have, um, your gangrene was starting. I was in another country, so I couldn't even come back. Back then, he was my boyfriend, not my husband. <laughs> and he was, he was supposed to, I'm sorry that I'm taking so long. Um, I feel like I really need to give this testimony. Um, so then, back then, he was supposed to go with me with surgery. But it turns out he lost his job, so he started a new one. Because he started a new one, he couldn't take off. But it was God's purpose because he was the one sending me money because I lost it all. I didn't have money for the surgeries. When I finally came back here, I lost my apartment. I lost my job. I got into a big debt. Um, we have to go live back with, with my in-laws. And then he became my husband. I asked God, because I had a bad relationship before him, and I said to God, if he's the man that you want from me, please give me a sign, because I, I don't want to go against your will anymore. Um, every time I turn my back on you, everything just turns worse. So I said, please give me a sign. If he's the man that, that you have for me, let him give me a promise ring. <laughs> And a week later, when I told him that, he actually gave me a promise ring. <laughs> and then we became husband and wife. This is his son, by the way. I love him so much. Um, and then after that, I don't know where 
where she is. Someone here prayed for us because of her. So this is a testimony because of that. So we are going through a very, very econom bad economic situation. And then my, my car engine went bad. It blew. We, we have been going like test after test. And then the windshield broke. Um, I had issues with the mechanic and God gave me, after Kia said many times, no, I'm sorry, I'm, I, we're not going to take care of your car. They finally, last week, gave me a car with a new engine. And they gave me the money to pay the debt that I had on the car. And third, I went to the bank already. There's no name or anything. But there was a deposit made of $7,700 in my account. And, and God told me that he was doing the seven because that's his perfection number. And that was a mark that, that it was a new beginning as a woman, as a wife, as in a spiritual level. And that's why he was doing seven with me. And what happened with my car was a prophetic representation of what he does to all of us. The same car, I don't have a new car, it's a 2015, but he changed the engine and that's what he does to us. He changes our heart, even though from the outside we might look the same. That's like what I wanted to share. Praise the Lord. Whew. You gotta let mom go first, Jeff. You gotta let mom go first. Oh, I praise God for that testimony. I really do. Um, I almost forgot. Oh, oh. So anyway, praise God for all of His answered prayers. But I also, my daughter's not here today. I don't think Lania, but her and her husband just closed on a home. Praise God. It's a beautiful home for their family. They were troubled by a neighbor by them. The neighbor would try to run them down. She was making a whole lot of noise at night and just causing trouble and spitting and cursing the name of the Lord. We went in prayer for that. She's been quiet ever since. I'm just praying for her salvation, but praise God, all of that stopped and they moved into their new home. Amen. 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 Good morning, church. God is good. I just want to praise God. Um, we're adding an addition to our family, baby boy, October 23. So just just keep uh, our little boy, keep our family in prayer. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, oh God. Sean. I just have to give thanks for um, literally his faithfulness, his faithfulness. Um, just, just thinking about, for me at least, how God has taken me from step to step to step um yeah this song just really spoke to my spirit today because you know you can be in a place where you feel like god i don't know how you're gonna do it this time or god i don't know what you're doing with me this time and for me it's just been a constant move of god just don't worry sean like i'm gonna show you all right or just him even doing things in your life, using you in ways that you would never see yourself. Sometimes we don't see ourselves worthy of it, right? But he's faithful. And it's not because of you. It's not because of anything you've done, but because he loves us that much. And I'm just so thankful that sometimes he, his love makes me feel like I'm the only one. You know, and it's not. I'm not the only one. But thank God for his love that it's that deep. It's that intimate. If we'd allow him that he, he, he lets us feel like we're the only ones he's, he's loving like this. And I just have to give thanks for that. I have to give thanks for how he's continued to be faithful, how he's given me a, a gorgeous, beautiful fiance. He's continued to just build my life. Where, where I felt like I didn't understand where, what, where I would be, what I would do. He's given me purpose. He's, he's giving me gifts I can't, I can't explain. Like, God is faithful, guys. God is good. God is good. If you don't know him, if you don't know him, please give him a chance. Get to know him. This man, God is good. He's good. He does not fail you. But there's times where our lives are bad and things are messed up. But that's not, that's not the end of your story. That's not the end of your story. And if you give God a chance, you'll see the goodness of his hand. So I just have to say that. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. 
man, some deep themes that some of us have just been really just wi- riding the wave of just recently too. Just to hear from our sister. Just that that breakthrough point. Man, Christine, I don't know where you are exactly. But, but that breakthrough point in, in her story came in that point of making a turn. It's what the Bible calls repentance. Repentance. And just saying, God, I'm done trying to do it my way. I know that you're calling me to do it your way. I'm done with that. I'm done trying to make it on my own, trying to control things on my own, trying to produce life on my own, just get satisfaction on my own, somehow just make it all work on my own. God, I'm done trying to do it my way, and now I'm turning it all over to you. That's what it means to have Jesus as Lord. That means he's the driver. He's the head coach. He's the one that calls the shots. And I just love it as Sean's saying, regardless of where you are on this journey, he loves you. He loves you. He loves you. I can hear Billy Graham, one of the foremost evangelists and preachers of all time, just saying again those words, he loves you, he loves you, he loves you. He loves you. No matter where you are, no matter what you've done. But he loves you so much not to simply leave you and me right where we are. But he calls us to come. He calls us to let go. He calls us to embrace the change that only he can bring in our lives. A washing of forgiveness, a miracle of being rescued and pulled out of the price and penalty of our our rebellion, our wicked ways, our sinfulness, a rescue from that and brought into his kingdom of light, of love, of hope, of joy, of his son, Jesus. That's what it's all about today. I'm going to ask you to stand once again across this room. We're just going to worship with that chorus once again. If God, not me, but if God is speaking to your heart through these testimonies, through these words, and you're like, I need that today. I need what they're talking about today. I need that change in my life today. I might not have a bathroom sink for you right here, but I'll tell you what, you can hold on to these, what they would say, the horns of the altar. You can find a place right here and just saying, God, it's me. It's me. It's me. Thank you for being vulnerable. Thank you for even giving that backstory that I was not looking for, but you know what? God knew. God knew. Thank you. You heard Sonia. You heard others in the midst of the storm. In the midst of it. Where are you going to be two years from now? You heard Emma's story. Where are you going to be a year from now? Is it going to be the same place spiritually? Maybe for some of you it's going to be the, the same thing. The same thing. Or will you let Jesus into your life today in a way that you're willing to swing wide open the gates of your heart saying, Jesus, would you come in as Savior and as Lord? I make a turn to you today. I'm done running. I'm done running. Would you come? All my life. All my life. And all my life. Come on, now is the time. Now is the time. God, speak it to your heart. And all my life you have been so, so good. I'm done running. With every breath that I am I'm done able. going through church just to go through church. Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. Giving him control. Giving him control. And all my control life of your life, you control of your marriage, control of your family, control of your business. Control today. Giving him control. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. Sing that chorus one more time. So, so good 
with every breath that I am made. Of the goodness of God, I will sing. I will yes, sing. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. Let's make a joyful noise to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. We say yes to you, Lord. Say yes to you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you turn around to several people around you today? Let them know that it's great to see them in God's house. Learn a new name. Meet a new face. Good morning, Faith Online. My name is Paula Visingardi, and we're so glad you're joining us today. We just want you to know while others are meeting and greeting one another how much you are loved and valued, not only by us, but by God the Father. Please, if you're here today joining us line, drop us a note in the chat. Let us know how we can be praying for you. If there's any needs you have, we'd love to come alongside you. Please also don't forget to check out Following Faith and our website to see all the amazing upcoming events that are going to be going on. We hope you'll join us, and we look forward to seeing you soon. God bless. Well, good morning once again. I've asked uh, Maya Kriesel to come on up with me. Uh, a lot of you know uh, that she was recently on a short-term missions trip, actually statewide, and had an opportunity to serve with a team. And, um, and thank you, uh, I'll just say once again, uh, to those of you that just got behind her, but uh, I'll let her do more of the talking than me. So thanks, Maya. Uh, yes, thank you. Do you want to hold it? Okay, thank you to everyone who was praying and who supported me. Uh, yeah, I went to Dallas, and the ministry we were working for is, has, is like a school, and they teach English to adult refugees, mostly from Afghanistan, but all the, also from other places. And yeah, so we got to be a part of that. And then for like the children of the adults, they're in childcare. That's where I was most of the time, working with like the children. Um, and then they also have an after-school program for the school age kids where we would help them with their homework and, and then we would teach them a Bible lesson after. Um, so one of the moments where I saw God was when I was working with one of the girls doing like homework with her and we had been there for a very long time and I was losing patience and I was tired and cranky and, and it was just hard to like get her to understand what she had to do and so I said like a quick prayer and God showed me like a lot of patience that I didn't think I had so that was cool and then another thing is that this was like the first time I was in an environment where some of the people like actually hated like the gospel in order for the adults to learn English like to be in the classes they had to also go to a Bible lesson and there was this one man who would, like, go around telling the woman, like, don't listen to the Bible lesson. Like, everything they're saying is, like, wrong and whatever. So that was just, yeah, that was crazy. And, yeah, thank you to everyone who helped get me there so I could share the love of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Uh, with that said, uh, Maria is coming at this time. God bless you. Welcome to Faith Assembly of God. We are glad that you are with us. If you are visiting for the first time, would you please fill out a Connect card? You can use the QR code behind me or in the pew, or if you would like to use a pen and paper, there's a card right in front of you. Please uh, drop that with us so we can give you a gift and we can know how to serve you. We remind you that the best way to give is online, uh, but if you're with us in the sanctuary, you can use the offering box at the back. I have a lot of things to tell you today. I don't want to lose you, okay? You with me? All right, I'm just giving you the warning, okay? Because I know sometimes you check out when I'm up here, but I got a lot to tell you today. Right after church, we have a new membership class. So if you have been coming to this church and you think it might be your home church, we would just ask that you would join us for this new membership class just to learn what does it mean to be a member of Faith Assembly of God? What is our mission here? What do we do? And what does it 
what does it mean if you're a part of it? You're not signing up by coming to the class, you're learning about it by coming to the class. You're gonna meet me downstairs in the fellowship hall right after church. Also, after church today, we have choir practice. So this choir will be um, uh, ministering on May 28th, and then there'll be a break for the summer. So if you want to be a part of the choir, it doesn't matter if you have ever sung before in your life, you can still be a part. You're going to meet right here at 1.30, okay? And if you have questions about that, you will see Jesse Creasel. All right, you still with me? Okay, just making sure. I want to remind you that the 6 a.m. prayer is continuing through the rest of the year. All right, so 6 a.m. prayer on Zoom, Monday through Friday, through the rest of the year. Now, this Tuesday would be our regular Connect Group Convergence. However, we are going to have to cancel for this Tuesday due to the funeral that will be taking place here at the church um, for Pastor John was praying for Reverend Sammy Klon. Um, so please, if you're a part of Tuesday's Convergence, don't show up on Zoom. We will not be there. Okay, um, so we will be starting up again with the next week, next week. Oh my goodness, what else? Okay, Bible Reading Connect Group will be meeting this Saturday at 7 on Zoom. Is that everything? Tell me yes. Did I miss something? Oh, Worship Friday night. Yeah, all right, so here's the other thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you in the back. You got me. Thank you. So um, for a while, we were having a Wednesday in-person worship and prayer. That is not happening anymore. We will not be having Wednesday in-person wor person worship and prayer. We will be having Friday in-person worship and prayer, okay? That's at 7.30, and it'll be meeting in the Faith Center, all right? If you're dropping off students for Fire Student Ministries, that's a perfect opportunity to head over for worship and prayer. If you do not have a student, it doesn't matter. Please come and be a part of that. All right? Super kids, come on down. No, don't come yet. Don't come. I told you that I had a lot going on today. I warned you, okay? I'm going to hand the mic over to Pastor John for one second. All right. Well, speaking of super kids, the reason why she was delaying your departure uh, is because we are so blessed to have a brand new uh, super kids coordinator and also assistant coordinator at this time. And um, uh, the assistant coordinator is Amber Baker, who's not able to be with us today. Uh, but filling uh, the mighty, mighty big shoes of our Super Kids coordinator is our sister Hazel Ortiz. <laughs> Hazel Ortiz. Hazel, could you come real quickly? Uh, as she comes, I'm going to ask our prayer team and, and our leaders that are here in the house also just to begin to come. Uh, Hazel, would you just uh, share a quick word with the congregation? Thank you. Um, I praise God that um, the Lord has always been the Lord of my life, and I have always worked um, as a Sunday school teacher and a Sunday school coordinator, and um, I praise God when Pastor John called me, and he um, spoke to me about um, this position, and he said, could you pray about it and talk to your husband and, and think about it, and I said, all right, um, I'll pray about it, but do I have to think about it? Because I say yes. <laughs> and yes, because I'm always about doing the Lord's will and working in God's kingdom. And my joy is always working with children. I love to see when they get it, when they learn about the word of God and about when they just get so excited about coming to learn about Jesus. And, you know, I, I always want to be part of that. So thank you, Pastor John. Church, let's uh, stand together wherever you are once again, and uh, let's, let's pray. Thank you, Christine. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for Amber, too, okay? Yes. So thank you for Hazel. Thank you for Amber. Thank you for these two ladies that we love so much. Uh, thank you for the joy and the love that they spread wherever they go, Lord. 
we thank you for that. And we thank you for, for bringing Hazel for such a time as this. You know everything, Lord, and your timing is always so perfect. Thank you for Hazel, uh, for Amber also that has freed up her schedule to help in this capacity, Lord. Thank you for this team. Thank you for the rest of their team, Lord. We know they are a team, Lord. And if they need more help, I pray that you would add to this team. And Lord, thank you for the experience, the gifts, the talents they bring to this ministry at this time, Lord. And we pray now that you would add to that all that they bring that you would add, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you don't call the equipped. You equip the called, and you will equip them with whatever else they're needing for this ministry. And Lord, just give them God ideas, fun ideas, new ideas, Lord. Give them something new. Add to the love they had. Add to the patience they have. Add to all that they bring, Lord. And most of all, your spirit your Holy Spirit, Lord, that your presence would be in them, your presence to help, your presence to guide, your presence in all things, Lord. So I just pray that you would fill Hazel, fill Amber, wherever she is now, with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Just bless them. Give them even new gifts, Lord. Add to them, add to them. And when they have any doubts, that they would go to your word. Lord, thank you that in Timothy you say that your word is there to, to fully equip the man of God, but in this case, the women of God, Lord. So thank you for them for bringing them for such a time as this, for their willingness to take, the bat take up the baton and continue in this race, Lord. Thank you for what you're going to do in the Super Kids ministry through them, Lord. And I pray that as a body, we would at all times come alongside them, not leave them alone, that we would be there to help, to pray for whatever they may need, Lord, that they may know they're not alone. You are with them, but we are all with them. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. All right, I mean it this time. Super kids, come on down. Three, four, and five-year-olds, kindergarten through fifth grade. Get on down here. If you have a super kid and you're visiting with us for the first time, we would love for them to go down to our children's church program. We just ask that you would head down with them for the very first time so you can register them. All right. Ms. Hazel, I'm going to let you pray for the children today. Church, can you extend a hand as we pray for the little ones? All right. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you have brought us here today, Lord. Lord, we thank you that today these children could have been somewhere else. They could have fought their families, but today they chose you, Lord. And Lord, I ask you that you would um, keep their minds focused on you, Lord, that today when they go downstairs, we will learn about joy, the joy of the Lord that is always in us, oh God. And in these perilous times, God, I ask you that you would fill them with joy always, God. That you would protect them, Lord. That you would send your angels and encamp them around these children, oh God. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity, oh God, to share your word with these children, Lord. Be with them in all that they do. In Jesus' name we pray and we all say, amen. amen. Have fun. Truth Seekers, you are staying in the sanctuary with us today. Two other things I want to mention to you. We have a lost and found because we are finding the lost. And I want that stuff back in your hands. We are going to keep lost and found for one month. One month. And then it goes. Bye-bye. So if you have lost something here, please come and find me. I will put you to our lost and found. The last thing I want to mention to you is those doors are for the children. If you need to use the restroom, we just ask that you would head out those doors and to your left. Thank you so much. All right. Should I turn it into a little quiz? Which doors are you going to use? And which doors are you not? Okay, I'll stop. I'll stop. Okay. Isn't it so cool when you see the kids come up there and you're like, oh, right? And also some of you are like, you know, especially if you're um, looking at a child from someone else's family going like, oh, he looks just like him. All right, she looks just like, oh, she's like a mini, a mini her, you know, a mini this one. Um, I don't know about you, but as a kid, if someone told me that I looked like one of my parents, particularly, let's say, in my case, my, my dad, I, you know, I could, I could have easily dismissed it. You know, I would have easily dismissed it like, no way, you know. They're so old. I'm so young. 
You know, how, how could this be, you know? How many of you have ever gone through that as a kid, you know? Oh, you look just like your mom. You look just like your dad, yeah. But then, like, one day it happens. I don't know exactly how it happens. I don't know what it is that causes that moment to happen. But all of a sudden, you begin to realize You, you begin to hear the things you're saying, the jokes you're telling, the slogans you're using. You can always take off what you have on, but you can't put on what you don't have. Take what you want, but leave what you take. You begin to listen to the way that you speak to your kids. You begin to watch the way you drive. You begin to hear yourself and watch yourself from almost this outer body experience of teaching your son how to drive. You begin to look in the mirror. You begin to listen to how you're speaking to a complete stranger. How you're interacting with the person at the grocery store. Maybe with that waiter or waitress at the restaurant. And all of a sudden, all these things begin to culminate, and you begin to watch how you're spending money, how you refuse to spend money. And you begin to realize it's happening. You have become like your parent. What you thought was impossible, somehow, by God, everything is possible. You have become more like them than you ever thought you would be. In fact, one of the things that my wife and I often um, discuss, we'll say discuss, in a very calm, non-emotionally charged manner, <laughs> is how much each one of us is like a particular parent that we came from. She'll say something in a moment where it's a, supposed to be a serious moment where she is just, you know, she is um, righteously indignant in that moment. And then I'll break in with a joke. And she'll say, OK, Paul Harris. That was my father's name, Paul. OK, Paul Harris. And then I'll look and I'll say something to her. OK, Vivian Diaz. <laughs> but she knows I'm not the only person who will say to her, you are just like your mother. So I sort of get you know, off the hook for that one. And now it's actually trickled down to our kids as we'll see in them traits of ourselves and traits, right, of, of one another, so that we're each like, I wonder where he got that from. Right? Or, oh, he is built just like you. Or, there's the Harris humor coming out in the next generation. Corny jokes, there they go. But it's not just about our kids, hear me, it's not just about our kids being like us or even somehow us being like our parents, you know, when we were kids, one of the key things that we have to remind our kids is that we were just like them. You ever gone through that as a parent, trying to remind them, I was just like you. They might think that they're the first generation to go through certain issues, certain challenges or problems, um, they, they might think they're the first ones to invent a certain way of fooling the system, of tricking their authorities, namely their parents. They might think they're the first ones, but no, 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 no. My wife and I are quick to remind them that before they were ever born, before the mountains were brought forth, or the earth was formed and came to be, from everlasting to everlasting, we were pulling the same tricks. And they might think they could get away with it, but, but my wife is quick to remind them, no, 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 no. I was the master. I was the master at pulling that fast one. We used to call it in my house when I would not want to eat anymore at the dinner and then say, I have to use the bathroom. Right? And they go, oh, there it goes again, the old macaroni trick. I was just, and why do I, what do I see happening in my boys? Yep, I was just like you. Sit down, I know the trick. I know the trick. And my wife will say, oh, I don't know. I mastered that stuff already. I knew how to fool 
you know, my parents. I knew how to fool the system. Uh, I don't know, uh, Jen, do they have that still? I think she might have earned a badge in that in Missionettes back in the day. Master of Trickery badge, is that, do they still have that? No, no, okay. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. In fact, I think it's a mind-boggling thing when as kids you see a picture of, like, your parents when they were young. And some of our middle schoolers that are here in the room, high schoolers, you know, and, and, and even some of us that are adults, obviously, it, it was always like a mind-boggling thing to see that when all of a sudden, you know, you're like, whoa, you were so young. What happened? And, and, they, and, you know, and they'll ask things like, you mean, they had cameras back then? You know. I know for me, I always loved seeing over our piano growing up as a kid in our home, um, a picture of my dad and his siblings and others from when they were kids. My, my father, like me, was the youngest of five in his family. Can you figure out which one is my dad in this picture based upon seeing me a little bit? Is it over here? Yeah, no, right here. Right there. Actually, if you would see me as a kid, uh, Lois, would that look a little bit like me as a kid? It was me. It was the exact eyes and everything as a kid. And if you know my sister Lois, you see the Harris eyes in us, right? Again, this is a picture from probably the 1930s. My dad was born in 1928, and um, so this was not long after that. And I always saw in this picture, though, a connection with my father who looks so much like I did as a kid. Because usually you're stuck thinking somehow or another, oh, you know, you were always an adult. You can't relate to my life, right, teens here? Yeah, like, you know, I, you, you, don't, you don't understand the pressures that I'm going through. And it's true, things have changed, have definitely changed in the culture. But somehow we begin to think like, oh, you, you don't even know what it was like to be in middle school. You don't know what it was like to be a teenager. You know, how, how could you relate? You know, they've never walked in my shoes. They don't understand what it is to go through temptation or struggles. Until one day you come to realize that not only are you a whole lot more like them than you ever thought, but would you hear me? But they were a whole lot more like you than you ever realized. Not only are you a whole lot more like them than you ever thought, but they were a whole lot more like you than you ever realized. Folks, if there's anything that God's word, the Bible, makes clear, it's that you are a whole lot more like Jesus than probably you ever thought because he was a whole lot more like you than perhaps you ever realized. I'm going to say it again. You were a whole lot more like Jesus than you probably ever thought because he was a whole lot more like you than perhaps you ever realized. Now, I know that might sound strange to a lot of us here, especially if you grew up with some sort of Bible knowledge and maybe in, maybe in a Christian home, maybe not. For a lot of us, it's tough because, you know, we, we recognize that Jesus was no ordinary man. He was not, as some major world religions will put him up to be, uh, just some sort of prophet amongst a whole line of prophets. You recognize that he was not just simply some sort of like really cool miracle worker or some good moral teacher by any means. Instead, he was and is the eternal Son of God, God himself who came into this world out of love for you and me. Anybody thankful for that? But did you ever wonder why the Bible tells us that Jesus, the all-powerful, all-knowing Son of God, did things like, well, sit down when he was, as the Bible will say, tired, weary? Wait, all-powerful, all-knowing Lord of the universe sitting down because he's tired? Do you ever wonder why he, this, uh, you know, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent being, you know, somehow that he, he asked for a drink when he was thirsty, the Bible will say? Wait, eternal son of God, God himself, 
like God himself, you know, thirsty, weary, or a why turning stone into bread would have even been a temptation for him. For he was hungry? Hungry? Or why he prayed at times all night and even fasted, going without food for, for weeks? For weeks? What? Wait. I mean, was it just a show? Was he just pretending somehow? You know, like some of us do with our kids when we're wrestling with them. You know, like I'm just, you know, I'm going to pretend that you're really beating me right now, but everybody knows that, you know, and I just snap my fingers and boom, you know. Was he just sort of like pretending? Just putting on a show that he was hungry or weary or thirsty or like needed to pray and fast, you know. Is that what it all was? without really experiencing the struggles like we go through them? Did, did, he, did he really need to go about these things, to go through these things? What, was it for real, this idea of fasting and praying? Was it, was it just like, okay, I'm just going to show them what to do, but I don't really need it myself? And while we're on it, let's ask this question. How in the world did he do all the miraculous stuff that he did? Was it because he's God, and so he could just flip the switch at any moment, and all of a sudden do like supernatural, miraculous stuff. Well, because he's God. And then he sort of put his Superman costume away, and then put in the glasses, and now he's mild-mannered reporter Clark Kent once again, you know, just the carpenter. And every once in a while, well, no, I'm going to snap my fingers, and I'm putting it back on. Here I am now. I could do that because I'm God. Or is there more to it? More to it. I believe as we've begun to uncover in our newest Connect Group series, Convergence by John Thompson, the Bible reveals that there's more to it. There's more to it. So that although God the Son always was from eternity past and always will be, there came a point in human history when he, in obedience to God the Father, came into this world taking on flesh, but not in a way where he was just pretending to struggle or suffer pain or just pretending to experience limitations or a dependency on God the Father and the Holy Spirit, but where he was genuinely doing so. Genuinely doing so. Where he, Messiah Jesus, as the Bible says, who, existing in the form of God, did not consider to be equal with God something to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the very form of a servant, having been made in the likeness of men. Folks, you see, he was more like you and me than perhaps you ever realized. And I want this thought to sink down deep today. He was more like you than perhaps you ever realized. So that when he faces off with the enemy of our souls, even as David spoke about a few weeks ago, facing temptation, facing Satan himself, as the Bible will refer to him. Yes, yes, Jesus is God in the flesh doing so, but he must do so with a total dependency on the Father, on the Spirit, and on the Word of God. You see, there was nothing easy about what Jesus went through. Do you understand that? It wasn't just the snapping of the fingers. There was nothing easy. Instead, he chose not to, as the word says, to grasp, to take advantage of, to hold on to his status, but instead fully subjected himself to the temptations and struggles that you and I face. Don't you ever think somehow Jesus couldn't relate to me because he was God. Yeah, God who took on flesh and who did not consider equality with God something to be held on to, but emptied himself. This is why the Bible can say, for we do not have a high priest referring to Jesus, the great high priest, who is unable to empathize or sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way. Can you read the rest of that? Just 
as we are. Don't forget the last part. Yet he did not sin. That's the huge line, again, of separation here. He did it perfectly. Living in your shoes and mine, fulfilling God's holy and righteous requirements perfectly in subjection, in obedience, and submission to the Father. You see, he was more like you and me than perhaps you ever realized. Is it sinking down yet? Is it sinking down? A man of sorrows, wrote the Hebrew prophet, who was familiar, acquainted with pain and grief. Subject to the pains and trials, temptations, and weaknesses of this fallen world. And as such, he was not just acting like he needed prayer or pretending that he needed to talk with his heavenly father. No, he really needed it. He really needed to get alone with his father. And when the Holy Spirit came to rest on him, as the Gospels tell us, this wasn't just about a really cool way of showing everybody, yep, I'm the anointed one. Oh, no, 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 no. Yes, John the baptizer was told that he would see the Holy Spirit come on the one that God had chosen on the Messiah. But instead, I want you to understand something. This was about Jesus as the Son of God who took on flesh, now genuinely, hear my word, needing, needing the empowering work of the Holy Spirit to accomplish what was before him. He really needed it. As the Son of God, God himself who took on flesh, he really needed the work of the Holy Spirit to now give him the power necessary to accomplish the God-given, Father-given task that was before him. This is why the Gospel of Luke says, Jesus, full of what? The Holy Spirit left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of what? The Spirit. Luke's just not throwing around phrases like he didn't really need it, but you know what? Since I want people to understand the concept that they need the Holy Spirit, we're just going to sort of paint this picture that Je No, that was not it. And when he went to Nazareth where he had been brought up and went into the synagogue, as Luke will tell us, as was his custom, I love that pattern of going to shul as we have all around us. And it was the same pattern that Jesus himself also did. And there he stood up to read and the scroll of Isaiah the prophet was handed to him. We're told that unrolling it, he found the place where it says, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free. And he goes on to say, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. What am I getting at? What am I getting at? Let's pause. Father, in the name of Jesus, even right now, I pray, Lord God, anything that'd be coming against me that be coming against your children today. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, I silence that in Jesus' name. I drive back anything that would be of a spiritual root right now that would come against me and each one here in the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name, amen. What am I getting at? Because Jesus was more like you and me than perhaps you ever thought, he Jesus, as a human being, was fully subject to his Father's plan and fully dependent on the Holy Spirit's power. Does that make sense? Fully, fully subject to the Father's plan and fully dependent on the Holy Spirit's power. And it wasn't for show. It wasn't an act. It was for real. He was really like you and me in every sense of the word, yet without sin without sin. So what does that have to do with you and me? How does that impact your life and mine? Does it have anything to do with you and me? What does that have to do with you and me? I just want to tell you everything, everything. Folks, would you hear me today? Because that means that the victorious and miraculous life that Jesus lived wasn't just because he was God. It was because he was submitted to the Father's plan and filled with the Spirit's power. 
sound familiar to what you and I are called to be? To what you and I are called to do? Submitted to the Father's plan and filled with the Spirit's power. It was because he spent time in solitude and prayer and meditating upon God's word, as well as following the promptings, the leadings of the Holy Spirit. This is, this is how he lived this victorious and miraculous life. And that means that as you and I are submitted to the Father, as we're submitted to the Father's plan and filled with the Spirit's power, as you and I put into practice those same spiritual disciplines that Jesus did, as we grow in intimacy with the Father and dependency on the Spirit, folks, there's no telling what God is going to do through you and me as his church. Can you say amen? There's no telling what. Why don't you tell a neighbor right now saying, get ready because you never know what God will do. Listen, God's word is clear. The same power and intimacy that Jesus relied on for his life and ministry is available to you and me still today. Somebody say, thank the Lord. This is why Jesus said things like, I am going to send who? Send who? You. I'm going to send whom? You, what my father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. This is why he said, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days, who? You will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Wait, wait a minute, you're noticing a shift? Because this was all about what Jesus himself had experienced as the God-man. Dependent on the Father, dependent on the Spirit. These were things that he himself experienced, but now he's saying, guys, you, you're going to receive this. This is going to be for you. This is why he said, it's not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. What is this about? This is about a submission to the Father's plan. A submission to the Father's plan, to his timing to how he's going to do things, to when he wants to do it, to what it is he wants to do. And he goes on to say, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. This is going to be you guys now. No longer me, says Jesus, essentially. It's not going to be about me going around from town to town, place to place. This is going to be you now. And I'm telling you how you're going to do it. That same anointing that rested on me, it's going to be now on you. It's going to be on you. This is why he said, can you read this together with me? Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. Wait, wait, wait. What? I don't know. For some of you, this might be the very first time you have actually seen and read these words. Think about what Jesus is saying. You're going to do even greater works than me. What? Because I don't know if you've looked in the mirror recently. You are not God. Some of you might need this reminder today. A timely reminder. In spite of trying to play as such, you are not God. I am not God. God help us the day that we have somebody at a platform or at a pulpit thinking they're such. How in the world are we supposed to do not only the same stuff, but even greater things than what Jesus did? Because he was and is God. I mean, it's such a statement doesn't even make sense. Unless, unless that is Jesus, as the Son of God who took on flesh, was more like you and me than you ever thought. Unless he was more like you and me than you ever thought. And if that's the case, then you and I can be more like him than perhaps you and I ever dreamed possible. In fact, that's God's call to you and me today to be 
like Jesus. To be like Jesus. All I ask, said the, the writer, is to be like him. All through life's journey, from earth to glory, all I ask is to be like him. To be like Jesus. I'm going to ask our musicians to begin to make their way. Folks, this all comes together in John's gospel. As the Apostle John describes a scene where at this point in their lives, the, re the recently crucified and now risen Jesus comes to his followers who are a little shaken up at this point, to say the least. They're fearful that, well, they might be the very next ones nailed up to a Roman cross. So Jesus shows up where they are, even behind locked doors, and he says to them, peace be with you. Then watch what Jesus says. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And John tells us, with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Remember what Jesus said back in John 14 and what we'll read elsewhere in John's Gospel? Jesus said, because I go to the Father. You're going to do greater things than these because I go to the Father. What was going to happen after Jesus died, was resurrected, and ascended to the right hand of God the Father? I'll tell you what was going to happen, and I think many of you know already. That was going to become the open door for the Holy Spirit to be poured out. But not until he had died, was resurrected, and ascended back to God the Father. Not until that had taken place would the Spirit be given. Would the Holy Spirit be poured out. And so with this, he says to them, receive the Holy Spirit. We won't get into all the things that have to do with the exact timing and the tense of the verb and, and the mood and all those things right now, but just for you to begin to see this. And John goes on to record Jesus telling them, if you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. What? This is huge. This is huge. Did you notice what Jesus said? Or even more importantly, I'll say did. He drew a parallel between himself and his followers. He drew a connection, a parallel between who he is and what he had come to do and now who they are and what they are being called to do. He drew a parallel. He essentially said that the mission they're about to embark on is just like the mission that he himself had embarked on. A parallel. As the Father has sent me now, I'm sending you. He drew a parallel that just as he was sent by the Father, they're now going to be sent by him. Just as he was empowered by the Holy Spirit, they're now going to be empowered by that same Holy Spirit. Just as he came with authority to forgive sins. Do you see it there? That they will now go forth with authority. Not only to trample on snakes and scorpions, meaning, in other words, not only to, to step on the powers of darkness, but authority to forgive sins. How, how in the world? Because as they would go forth and preach the message of Jesus, the good news of Jesus, they would then be empowered. They would then be given authority to be able to declare as a person would turn from their sin, put their hope and their faith in Jesus, and begin to follow him. They begin to be able to say, your sins are forgiven you. Based on the authority of Jesus and who he is and what he's done, your sins are forgiven you. Folks, because Jesus was like us, we are now called to be like him. I'm not talking about becoming the second person of the Trinity. 
I'm not talking walking around somehow claiming, oh, you mean I can be my own little God? As if the New Age and all other sorts of ideologies and philosophies and systems out there have it right. I'm talking about God himself coming to be just like you and me. So that now you and I can be like him. Can be like him. What does that mean? Focused on our purpose. As the Father has sent me, now I'm sending you. We are sent. We go forth from these doors today. From this live stream today. We go forth with a purpose. Not simply faith AG's purpose or pastor's purpose. Whatever it might be. No, but we go forth with a God-given purpose. To help real people experience real life. In Jesus. To know Jesus. And to grow in him. To make disciples of all nations. Just like Jesus, we're called to be dependent on the Spirit. And how does that show up? That shows up in our lives by, by taking time to be intimate with God, to get alone with him, to talk with him, to pray, to be in settings like this where we can be recharged, refilled, to be in his word, dependent on his power, knowing that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall surely quicken our mortal bodies as well. That same Holy Spirit is at work in your life and mine. He has sealed us. It's, the, it's a deposit. He's a deposit within us already for what's yet to come in eternity. And he desires to give us, even as he gave Jesus, all the power that we need to accomplish the God-given task we've been given. It's about walking in authority walking in authority just like Jesus and everything else that we'll talk about in these <coughs> in these forthcoming weeks through our connect groups through our time here together as a group all will stem from this from this truth from these principles but let me make something very very clear while Jesus is our model for life and ministry please do not Stop there. For those of you that have already been plugged in to our Convergence Connect group, you know that John Thompson's looking to sort of flip this around the other way. For most of us, or many of us in the church, who have grown up only seeing him as Savior and Lord. But I have to flip it back today the other way. Because there are others of you in this place or online with us today that have only grown up thinking, well, he was just a good model, a good teacher a really cool rabbi. He was a, a really amazing guy that did just some, some incredible things. Please, while he is our model for life and ministry, do not miss the fact that he came firstly to be your Savior and Lord. To be your Savior and Lord. With that, I'm going to ask you to stand across this room today. One of the saddest things I see is when people are striving so hard to be like Jesus, but they've never actually received Jesus. And they're trying so hard to be good, to be good, to be good, to go to church, read their Bible, pray, do all this. And they're trying so hard to do all these really good things that actually help us grow. But folks, listen, the baby is not going to grow um, unless the baby has firstly been born. Been born. Now I know we could talk about, we have some doctors and nurses in this room talking about, again, you know, pre-birth, you know, growth, absolutely. But I think you understand where I'm going. I'm talking about that child. First needs to be born in order to be able to grow in a healthy manner. Folks, some of you have not been, as the Bible talks about, born yet. Born. You've been given a new life, a new start in Jesus. How do I do that, Pastor John? 
that means that you have made a decision by God's help and grace that you didn't even realize was taking place to say, I am done trying to do things my way. I am making a turn to now do things God's way. I am no longer trusting in myself, in my good works, in who I am or what I could do, and I am trusting in Jesus, in who he is and what he's done. I give you, Jesus, control of my life. I surrender to you. We've talked about it earlier today, and I want to remind you of that. Folks, I pray today as Kivian ministers in song, if you are just at that place of recognizing, I need Jesus. You need his forgiveness. You might need healing. You might need restoration. You might need life or joy. But today that you would make a turn. Today you would reach out to him. I'll be here as you come. There'll be others that'll be more than ready to talk with you, to pray with you. Let's take this time right now before we exit those doors to be sure that we've opened up our hearts and this time for God to do his work in our lives. Come if you'd like. Thank you, team. Come. You don't need a savior if you don't know sin and shame. You don't need forgiveness when you've never walked away. Yes, this is my story. I'm a life made new. I'm the one who's been set free. Yes, I have found a friend in Jesus. He is everything to me. Yes, I have found a friend in Jesus. Yes, he is my everything. I have a shepherd who always keeps me safe and I found a healer who knows my every pain but this is my story of redeeming love I have come to know him
whatever your need might be. Prayer for, for the sick today. Prayer for brokenness in some area. Just know that this place is open if you'd like to talk with somebody, to have somebody pray with you. We're here for you. Thank you, Lord. And he walks with me, he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. The joy we share, what else compares? It's like nothing I've ever known. He walks with me, he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. The joy we share, what else compares? It's like nothing I've ever known. Oh, he walks with me, he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. Yes, he does. The joy we share, what else compares? It's like nothing I've ever known. I can't believe it. Yes, I can't believe it. Father, we thank you for meeting with us today that you, the God of the universe, who created everything, the world and all who live in it. God, thank you for creating us. Thank you for loving us so that even as we began singing today, that we are friends of God in Jesus. And thank you that even as we close out our time together, God, we're able to declare that you, Jesus, you're our friend, you're our Savior, our Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Lord. We love you. Just a moment, I'm just gonna bless you. This place will remain open here in the front. Be mindful of those that are still praying, that are still spending time. Maybe just be sure to keep your conversation in this room just at a lower volume. We'll remind you 1.30 right here for the choir. For those of you that will be picking up children from Super Kids, you'll, you'll head down these doors to my right. Now may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. 
May the eyes of your heart be enlightened in order that you may know his power, which is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realm. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. The Lord be with you. Amen. I have found a friend in Jesus. It's everything to me. Yes, I have found a friend in Jesus. Hey, Faith Online, we want to thank you once again for joining us today. Now, if you made a decision to follow Jesus, please be sure to click the next steps link below. If you're having trouble getting to us in person because of life circumstances and would welcome a visit from our care team, please let us know by clicking the connect link below. Finally, if God's been using this ministry as a blessing in your life, uh, we would love for you to do three things. Number one, subscribe to this channel. Number two, share this link with others. And finally, number three, support the work of this church by praying for us and giving financially as God would lead you. Well, until next time, remember, living for Jesus won't always be easy, but it will always be worth it.